Hello families and welcome back with yet another YouTube video. So today we're going to be focusing on lesson 5-2, which is counting back to subtract on an open number line. So in this lesson, students are going to use an open number line to subtract by tens and ones. Using an open number line to subtract involves taking numbers apart and putting them back together to support the development of place value and understanding uh, computational fluency. So we're going to go ahead and jump right in. This is an open number line that I'm showing right here. Students in class have this in their math folder. Every student has a place value mat, which is what we started working with in our first lesson. They have an open number line. They have a 120s chart, and they also have a little card that shows the numbers uh, counting by tens and how to write them in word form. So without further ado, let's just go ahead. I don't want to take up too much of your time. So here we have 28 minus 24. As within the last lesson, or maybe it was the lesson before, we talked about how when we are using um, the hundreds chart to help us subtract, we were going up and then we we're going to the left. Now, obviously, we don't have the hundreds chart here, so we aren't going to be going up, but the same rule applies when we are going to be going to the left. Uh, so what that means is that to start, to start a subtraction, we need to write 28 here. Because when we subtract, we are going to be going backwards towards the left. If we were adding, we would put our number here and we would be going towards the right. Okay, so here's where the place value um, comes in. So in the number 28, we know we have two tens and eight ones. Okay, in the number 24, we have two tens and four ones. So they want us to go backwards, two tens and four ones. So we are going to do exactly that. We're going to go back one ten first. And what I like to do up here is have students write that we are going back. So we know that we are subtracting with this problem. So we're going to do minus 10. Now, all students are required to do is count back by 10. Obviously, it's a little bit easier to count fours by 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and so on. But now we need to get students to understand how to count backwards from 10. So if we are counting backwards from 10, we know that 28 minus 10 would be 18. Also, if students are having a difficult time uh, counting back by 10, you can still have them pull out that hundreds chart. That'll definitely help them to, until they get to they can do this uh, mentally. So if they're still struggling with counting back mentally by 10, definitely use that hundreds chart uh, to help them. All right. So we have our first 10. Again, we said we know we have two 10s in the number 24. So we went back one 10 already to give us 18. Now we need to go back another 10 and I'm going to write minus 10 here. So 18 minus 10 is going to be 8. So now we've gone back our two 10s, which we know is made up of the number 20 uh, in the number 24. Now we need to go back our four ones. So we're going to go jump minus one, jump minus one, jump minus one, and jump minus one. We need to make sure we have our four, one, two, three, and four. So now we have everything we need. We jumped back our two tens and our four ones. Now we need to make sure we write everything down. So eight minus one is seven. Seven minus one is six. Six minus one is five. Five minus one is four. So our answer is going to be four. 24, I'm sorry, 28 minus 24 equals four. Alrighty, let's go ahead and look at another one. I'm going to leave that one there, actually. So we are going to do 50 minus 35. Hopefully you guys can see that. Yep, you can see it. Okay, so again, we are subtracting. So we are going to write our number at the very end, and we are going to be working our way backwards as we subtract to the left. So we're going to write 50. And they want us to subtract 35 from it. Again, honing in on that place value. The number 35 has three tens and five ones. So we are going to do exactly that. We're going to go back three tens. We're going to do one ten at a time. So that's going to be one jump. And we're going to put minus 10. We're going to go two jumps. That's going to be another minus 10. And we're going to go three jumps. That's another minus 10. So we have our 10, 20, 30. And now we need to do our five. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one, uh, one, two, three, four, and then minus one. So I did something a little different here. As I was subtracting my tens uh, up until I got to my ones, I was writing it down. 
Um, I know from experience that some students have trouble going back and forth from um, subtracting a 10, then writing the difference, and then going back because they lose track of what how they're counting. So this is the reason why I did this one, just writing my numbers down, what I'm subtracting from, and then going back and adding them in. So that way I'm not mixing the processes, that I'm separating them, and hopefully uh, that could make it a little bit easier as well. So we have our 50, and we're going to subtract 10, and that's going to give us 40. We have our 40, and we're going to subtract 10, which is going to give us 30. We have our 30, we're going to subtract 10, which is going to give us 20. Now we have our 20, and we're going to subtract 1. 20 minus 1 is 19. 19 minus 1 is 18. 18 minus 1 is 17. 17 minus 1 is 16. And 16 minus 1 is 15. So our final answer is going to be 15. Okay, so I've gone ahead and showed you two examples. Uh, so I'm going to actually show you a third one. And this one is going to be the same concept, but we're just going to count backwards in bigger chunks. Okay. So I'm going to show 63. I'm going to do 68 minus 23. Let's do that. 68 minus 23. Okay, same thing with place value. We know the number 68 has six tens and eight ones. The number 23 has two tens and three ones. So in, instead of subtracting by uh, tens, we know that the number 23 has two tens, which equals 20. So we could actually subtract from 20 to make our, our subtraction process a little bit quicker. So as always, we're going to write our 68 at the end because we know we're subtracting. So that means we're working our way to the left. So instead of counting back two tens as we did in the bottom problem and in the problem before, we're just going to count back 20. Now that's a bigger subtraction problem, but it helps us to go a little bit quicker because, again, the goal is to have students be able to do this uh, mentally. So if we go ahead and have 68 and we subtract 20 from it, that's going to bring us to 48. Okay, so now we've done with one jump our two tens. Now we need to show our three ones. Minus one, minus one, minus one. There's our three ones. 48 minus one is 47. 47 minus one is 46. And 46 minus one is 45. So we have our final answer, 68 minus 23 equals 45. So again, the whole reason that we're showing students these the so many different strategies is because, again, it's really important uh, that students do whatever works best for them. I will tell you, uh, me as a teacher, there are some assignments where it says to only focus on doing one way. Um, for me, the goal with, with this subtraction and addition is for me to know that students understand how to get to the correct answer. So to me, it doesn't really matter which strategy they use, even if uh, it says for them to use one specific strategy. Yes, I would love them to learn how to use all the strategies, but at the end of the day, what's more important to me is that they understand how to get to the correct answer and can explain to me how they got to the correct answer. So whichever one of these strategies works for them is the one that I want them to use. So as always, go ahead and please watch this as many times as you need to. Start, pause, stop, rewind, um, and make sure you are subscribed to our channel so that you never miss an upload and that you can keep up to date with our videos. Uh, make sure you always check in the down bar, the, the comment, not the comment box, the, the down section, the description section, uh, because there will be important information that maybe I left out in the video that I realized post-edit that I need to put in there. So please make sure you check that. Also, I haven't mentioned, mentioned it in a few videos, the didax.com. I will link that down below as well because that's our online virtual manipulatives for students to use at home as well. Um, anything you need to let me know, go ahead and message me on Dojo. Give me any suggestions. Let me know anything I left out. And I will look forward to seeing you in the next video. Bye.